Hello, and welcome to the Dell EMC PowerStore storage provision and video. In this video, we will provide an overview of the storage resources available in PowerStore, give a demonstration of the provisioning process, and end with additional resources. Let's start with an overview. PowerStore OS 2.0 adds support for NVMe over fiber channel, for short, NVMe FC. This allows for block resources to access the data over NVMe. It requires 32 gig fiber channel speeds throughout the stack. This includes the IO modules and the host HVAs. One of the main changes that this adds is a new host and a host initiator of type NVMe. We will provide an example of how to leverage NVMe as part of the demonstration. Let's continue by providing an overview for the different resources. Starting with volumes. A volume is a block storage resource with a defined capacity. Within the PowerStore Manager, a volume of multiple volumes can be created at the same time. In a multi-appliance cluster, volumes are created and stored at a single appliance level. Once the volume is created, the resource balance will identify which appliance it is going to be created on for the instance of a multi-appliance cluster. The user also has the option to manually select an appliance. Volumes can be moved between appliances in a cluster after creation using the migrated feature. Once the volume is created, it has different properties associated with it, such as capacity, performance, protection, alerts, and host mappings. To create volumes, we need to provide a name for, for a single volume or prefix if creating multiple volumes as well the quantity and size with the option to provide a description and appliance placement for the volumes. In addition, general information, there are also additional properties that can be set, such as associated volume groups, volume protection policy, and volume performance policy. This performance policy determines how many resources the volume will receive if the processing power of the system becomes fully utilized. This is a relative ranking, so resources with a high value receive more than those with a medium value, which receive more than those with a low value. This distribution of the system processing power only happens if the system becomes fully utilized. Otherwise, there's no difference between resources with a different performance policies. Users can also select the host to map the volumes to, either at creation time or at a later time. There are a few other tasks that can be done with volumes. For example, you can take a thin clone or a snapshot. Once the volume is created, a host or multiple hosts can be mapped to it. After creation, the volume size can be extended. However, it cannot be shrunk. Let's proceed with talking about volume groups. A volume group is a logical container with multiple volumes or volume thin clones. We can use a volume group to have a single management point for multiple different volumes. When creating a volume group, only a name is required, with the option to set a description, protection policy, and setting the right order consistency. The volumes are added after it is created. The volumes in a volume group are called members. The members can be found under the properties of the volume group. Let's go over a couple of considerations in regards to volume and volume groups. A volume can only be part of a single volume group. All volumes in the volume group are placed on the same appliance even in the case of having a four appliance cluster. A volume that is part of a volume group cannot be assigned to another protection policy if the volume group is assigned one already. Last thing to note, a single volume cannot be restored if the right order consistency is enabled for the volume group. The entire volume group and all member volumes will be restored. PowerStore is a unified solution with file system being supported with the PowerStore T appliances. In order to go in more detail in regards to file systems, let's go ahead and first discuss NAS server. A NAS server is a logical container that allows the user to access their data on their file system. A NAS server is associated with protocol and the environment configuration. It is a requirement before creating any file system. NAS servers are used to enforce multi-tenancy. When a user creates a NAS server, a different user does not have access to another NAS server. Since 
the NAS server has its own independent configuration, such as DNS, LDAP, and so forth. There are different protocols that the NAS server supports, which includes NFS, SMB, multi-protocol, and FTP and SFTP. Users can set the protocol when creating the NAS server or after it is created. After talking about NAS servers, let's now talk about file system. Once a NAS server is available, a file system can be created. Once created, it cannot be moved to another NAS server. To create a file system, there are a few things we need to specify, including the NAS server, the name, the size, and once it's done, users can create an NFS export or SMB share depending on what protocol or protocols were enabled at the NAS server. And the user can also set the protection policy if desired. Within a file system, there are a few things that can be done. For example, snapshot, thin clones can be taken and leverage a lot of the data services, including compression and deduplication. Replication is not supported on file system. Neither are VAAI file primitives. Now let's review storage containers. PowerShell automatically provisions a default storage container across all the cluster capacity. When the VASA provider is registered for a power store, the storage container becomes accessible and can be added as a VVault data store. For PowerStore X, the VASA provider is automatically registered and the VVault data store is mounted as part of the initial configuration. The host needs to be registered using iSCSI or Fabric Channel. Once the hosts are registered, they automatically provide access to the storage container. I use can create additional storage containers with the option to create a quota or to set a quota in order to limit the usage. Now we will proceed with the demonstration. We will create a host, then a volume and a volume group and map them to the host. We will also show how you can create a NAS server, a file system, and a storage container. Let's navigate to the PowerStore Manager and from the dashboard page, we will go ahead and create a host. We navigate to the compute, host, and host groups. Notice that two hosts are already configured. We will go ahead and create an NVMe host. We click add host and provide a name. Select ESXi as the operating system and click next. Notice that there are three types of initiators. We select NVMe, which was added in the PowerStore OS 2.0. See that the requirements are shown. We have made the required configuration and zoning changes, so we can click Next. We pick the auto-discovered initiator and click Next. Notice that the details we selected are shown. We review them and click Add Host. Now let's proceed to create a volume. We click on Storage and then Volumes. We can see the list of volumes and thin clones in this page. To create a volume, we simply click Create. We get the volume name, a description. We will create a single volume, so we provide the size. And we also have the option to select the placement. To add the volume to a volume group, specify a volume protection policy and the volume performance policy. We will keep all these options to the default value and click Next. A user can create a host mapping while creating a volume. In this example, we select the previously created host by selecting NVMe and selecting the host shown. We click Next to continue to the last step and click Create to finalize the operation of volume creation. The volume that we created is now shown. Let's navigate to vCenter to add the NVMe volume as a VMFS data store. We right click the host, select Storage and click Rescan storage and click OK. We right click the host again, select storage and click new data store. We keep the VMFS type and click next, give it the same name and select the NVMe device and click next. We keep the MFS6 and click next. Keep the default partition and configuration and click next. And complete the creation by reviewing the settings and click in finish. The data store is created and we go ahead and confirm the backend device. This data store can be used in order to deploy new VMs or simply vMotion assistant VMs into the new NVMe data store. 
Let's go back to the Power Store Manager to continue creating additional storage resources. We go ahead and create a volume group by clicking Storage Volume Groups. We click Create. We give it a name, description, and select Protection Policy, which will create a snapshot every 12 hours. Notice that the right order consistency is enabled by default. The right order consistency will treat the volume group as a single entity when a snapshot is taken or when it's replicated. This feature enables all volumes within the volume group to be crash consistent. We keep it enabled and click Create. Once the volume group is created, you can add members to it. We select the newly created volume group and click More Actions. Notice that multiple actions are shown. We click the Add New Volumes action. We provide a prefix and change the quantity to 5 and the size and then click Finish. Click OK. To map it to the host we previously created, we click Provision and Map. We select the NVMe option and click Apply. Now that we have covered how to create volumes in volume groups and map them to a host, we will look at the file side. To begin, we first create a NAS server. We click NAS servers under storage and click Create. We provide a name, IP address, subnet mask, gateway, and VLAN ID, and click Next. Select the protocol type to NFS v4 and click Next. We will not use the Unix directory services, so we click Next. We will not enable DNS, so we also click Next. We review the summary and click Create NAT Server. Once the NAT Server is created, we can create a file system. We click File System Storage and click Create. The Create File System Wizard is shown. We select the NAS server we just created and click Next. We provide a name, a size, and click Next. As we enabled NFS, we can create an NFS export by providing a name. Note that the NFX export path is shown. We click Next. In the Configure Access step, we change the default access to Read, Write, Allow Root, and click Next. Setting a protection policy is also available during the creation of the file system. In this example, we select One and click Next. We review the summary and click Create File System. See that the file system is shown. Lastly, we will show how you can create a storage container. A storage container can be mounted in vSphere as a VVault data store and used for storage. In this environment, we have a PowerSort team in which we have configured the vCenter and VASA provider. To create an additional storage container, we click Storage and then click the plus sign next to the storage container as a shortcut. And see that the Create Storage Container pane is automatically open. We provide a name, and then we enable the storage container capacity quota to limit the usage by clicking the checkbox. Then we set the quota to one terabyte and click Create. The new storage container is shown. This concludes the demonstration. For additional information, please reference the shown resources. Thanks for watching this video.